everybody. Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today I'm going to be telling you about a swap that I did with another miniaturist here on YouTube. The swap I'm going to show you today, I actually did with Karen from Crack and Make Ruckus. And if you've never seen her site, you should definitely go visit it. The description for her site is below in the description, so make sure you check that out. All her stuff is amazingly detailed and amazingly small. So if you're a true lover of miniatures, check it out. I don't know how she does some of the stuff that she does. I was a little intimidated actually to do this because her stuff is just so perfect and yeah, my stuff is usually falling apart on purpose because I don't know how to make stuff perfect. <laughs> but um, anyway, I was excited she wanted to do this. I am not gonna make this a tutorial like I usually do because there are so many bumps and scrapes and redos and start overs along the way that it would be really hard for me to make this a tutorial. Um, I think if I did a project similar to this again in the future, I could maybe do it, but this time there were so many things I wasn't used to doing that it just took me longer than I expected and um, I had to do things a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all the footage I got from beginning to end of this project. Actually, I'll show you the project. So this is the project that I made, the little bookcase, and I'll put it next to my face. If you can't tell, it's a little smaller than normal. I was going to see if I had one of my normal miniatures sitting around. I don't. Here's one of my 12th scale miniatures, and this is how big this guy is. So if you can't tell, the scale is a little different, and that was my main struggle in this project. So I'll go ahead and roll the footage of this being created, and I'm gonna keep talking to you about some of the trials and struggles I went through with this project. So if you haven't been to Karen's channel, you may not know that she works in half scale. And half scale is half the size of the scale that I normally work in. I work in 12 scale, which means one inch equals a foot. And her working in half scale means that a half an inch equals a foot. So this is not just any normal swap. It was a scale swap, and it also ended up being a style swap because uh, her style is very detailed and finished and beautiful and things are done very precise. Uh, and my style is old and broken and falling apart. <laughs> and uh, sometimes that's kind of my default because uh, if something gets messed up, I can just mess it up more and pretend like I meant to do that. But, um, so we ended up sending each other uh, some examples of things that we might like to receive from each other uh, to use in our projects and everything she sent me was these gorgeous pieces of furniture with nice mahogany finishes and so I already knew that, that was going to be a challenge for me but I was really excited to have a challenge um, that's one thing that I love about swaps I have done swaps before but it was on like a miniatures group online thing. It was ne I've never done one on YouTube, YouTube before, but um, it was a challenge. It was a big challenge, but I really enjoyed it. One of the biggest things that I found to be difficult was changing my material choices. So for my larger 12 scale items, I use mat board, which is about a 16th inch thick. Now, if you think about this piece, if this piece of furniture was in half scale and I used mat board, the same material, and it was a 16th inch thick, but a foot equals a half inch. And even if you're not a carpenter or someone who is doing all this calculation and math in your head, you're still going to look at that miniature and think, that doesn't look real. You're going to think, something's off, it looks chunky, it looks like a toy. So in order to get that realism in there, um, you have to use materials that are the correct thickness. So I couldn't use my normal mat board. I couldn't use cardstock because it's not strong enough. So I had to invent 
an in-between. And my invention ended up being uh, taking two pieces of cardstock and gluing them together with uh, wood glue. And um, I tried this doing one big piece at a time. I'd use wood glue in between two pieces of cardstock, stick them together, put a really heavy book on it, but it came out just all wavy. And because the moisture in the glue, when it dried, it warped the paper. So that didn't work. Um, so then I was back to square one. But I was thinking, there has to be a way to make this work. So I cut the paper into smaller pieces. And um, I decided to try the wood glue method again. So I took two small pieces of cardboard, put them together with the wood glue in between. And then I took a very hot miniature iron and I just basically ironed it together and because it was hot it kind of I don't know cured the glue really quickly um, you could hear it like sizzling whenever I put the iron on there and that kept the cart the cardstock flat so because I did that I had my new material which is about a 1 30 seconds inch thick and this was going to look a lot more real in half scale. So I'm going to show you up close. If you can see the layers. The thicknesses look a lot more real than they would if I had still used my 16th inch mat board. The next struggle I had was filming it. Uh, I don't have the best eyesight. Right now I'm not wearing my glasses, but in some videos I do have my glasses on. Um, but the problem I have is seeing up close. And so I ended up, because this is so much smaller, I would have this next to my face working on it like this so I could see and I would be missing filming half of the stuff that I tried to do. So Karen, I have no idea how you film your videos because maybe you just have better eyesight than me. I don't know. You'll have to tell me your tricks because I had a really hard time keeping my miniature in frame while I was working on it because I wanted it to be right up here so I could see it. The third challenge was working with glass um, and uh, these pieces here that you see are plexiglass so um, it's not real glass but I don't know if it's because I'm working in miniature that the dust particles just seem bigger and more out of control. I tried everything to keep this plexiglass clean and it still came out with smudges. I redid I don't know how many pieces of glass at least three times trying to keep it clean and I just couldn't do it I don't know if I just have a messy workspace I don't use a lot of plexiglass in my stuff but oh my goodness it just attracted everything and I would drop something and the glue would get on it and so I know Karen's gonna get it she's gonna see the mess that's on the glass but um, after you redo it the third time you're just like I I'm gonna go insane if I do this again and so I'm really upset about how that came out but Karen I hope you still <laughs> like it um, I'm definitely gonna have to figure out a way to keep plexiglass clean until I'm ready to be done with it because um, if any of you guys have any suggestions for that um, I know that some people can like get plexiglass that has like the peel off stuff on it um, but the problem is a lot of times I set that into a frame and it becomes very difficult to pull off a piece if it's in a frame already so anyway the last thing uh, wasn't really a challenge um, but was an interesting um, thing to try was I wanted to make some interesting doorknobs and I wanted them to be in half scale and um, I wanted to try making glass doorknobs with little bitty um, sewing pins like you know the ones you stick into your project while you're sewing and so I decided to use acrylic gel 
nail polish and I dipped the head of the pin into the nail polish and then cured it in my LED lamp. And in doing this it hardened it and it looked like glass around the pin. And so I did that several times and then added a little bit more on top just to kind of build up the knob and I was really happy with how those came out. I hope they hold up because I've never done this before. I just wanted something a little classier for um, the piece and I don't know, I was kind of excited about that idea so Karen you'll have to let me know if they hold up and look good for a long time. So overall I'm super happy with this project. As I'm sure you saw the, some of the drawers open, not everything opens, um, the front panel comes off so that she can display dishes in there because I wanted it to be functional although I didn't really feel like I had the skills to make the half scale doors functional um, I still wanted her to be able to open the piece and put stuff in it and close it so I was kinda happy with my solution there um, Karen's really good about making everything she makes functional so I hope she'll forgive the little cheats that I put in there just because I didn't I don't want to give her something that would fall apart or look clunky and out of scale and since I don't work in half scale a lot I really tried my best to kind of do a happy medium between stuff that I felt comfortable that would stay together and last for a while um, and then also staying in scale and making something that she would like so that's all for my part of the swap. Stay tuned and you'll get to see me opening what she sent me. We sent each other ideas, but I really don't know exactly what she came up with or what she decided to make. So I'm really excited to open it. I know it's something for my Adams Family project, so that makes me extremely excited. And seeing her talent just makes me like so giddy to have something that she made. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you visit her channel. Check her out. Um, she should have a video going up today or soon, sometime around this video, that shows how she made the miniature she made for me. And she also had to switch scales and um, styles too. So it was a fun and challenging project for both of us. It's a couple weeks later and my package has arrived from Karen from Crack and Make Ruckus and I am very excited to open it up. Uh, my sister's here, wave your hand. She's not going to be on camera but she's really excited to see it too so I feel awkward but she's <laughs> laughing at me. Anyway, let's open this package. Uh, blade. Alright, let's get the blade. I have an idea of what it is because she asked me some questions. A pretty pretty good idea of what it is, but um, I don't know. She could have fooled me, but I, I definitely don't know what it looks like. I know it's something for my Adams Family project because that is what we talked about. So here we go. Let's see. Look at my letter off screen. Ooh, okay, it's design. So I don't wanna see, I wanna see the miniature first. So I think she sent me her design and all her plans. So that's kind of cool. All right, so here we go. Is it in the yellow maybe? I think it is. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. So if you don't know Sorry, I guess I should show you. I get to look at it first though, it's mine, right? <laughs> um, it is the clock from the Adams Family movie. There's a part where um, Gomez comes around the corner and the clock is ringing and it's a miniature of the house. Are you seeing the detail in this? The siding? 
You can see the definition in the siding. She must have put that on like a piece at a time. That is amazing. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna look at the plans and see if there was any ex extra information on it to share with you, but wow, can y'all see that? I'm gonna try and hold it still so you can see the detail. You can see the detail in the windows, in the, um, oh my gosh, in the shingles. I've lost use of my words. This is amazing. All right, so what she sent me were her plans and designs, and oh my goodness, this is just amazing. And I can see every single detail that's on this plan on the miniature. Like this window detail, it's on there. If I can hold it still. Do you see this? Wow. Okay, I have to show you one more detail. The pillars are separate from the wall. She didn't even like glue them to the wall and make it look like they're sticking out. They're sticking out. How? How do you do things this small? It's amazing. And my sister says it's really cool. Karen, thank you so much for this miniature. Thank you for all the hard work you put into this. I mean, the details are just stunning. This is definitely gonna be one of my prized miniature possessions. And I definitely need to go make a place for this immediately. If you wanna see how Karen made this incredibly detailed piece, please make sure to visit her channel. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. Um, I'm really curious, so that is what I am going to be doing, figuring out how she made this. <laughs> I really enjoyed this swap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.